So you've seen the title of this video and you might be wondering, Jake, do you really care that much about what makes good or bad characters? Well, like a Karen who's just entered a retail store, I've come for blood. By the way, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, it's a fun little community, and I'd love you to be part of it. But other than that, enjoy the video. In the realm of anime, despite their obvious power and sometimes questionable writing, I truly do love the Ichigos, the Gokus, even the Saitamas. I mean, the plot of One Punch Man literally gimmicks the idea of overpowered characters. It kind of counters the issues provided by these types of characters, such as the marginalization of side characters, minor characters who maybe before presented some kind of purpose to the story who are now just irrelevant. Making authority figures just completely superfluous and a lot of the time they just get turned into cannon fodder. Having really powerful characters can sometimes contribute to a lack of tension, a lack of consequences. And it's great with One Punch Man because it takes minor characters and actually gives them a reason, a point in the story. I mean, Moomin Rider is like one of the best characters in the show just because of how hard he tries. <laughs> the thing is a lot of overpowered characters derive from consistently published works. I mean, you've got magazines or manga and their consistency and how much they're actually published is more consistent to a news broadcast just trying to get the next scoop. I watched Nightcrawler recently, so that's why my mind just kind of went to that analogy. And to the majority of writers, not just for anime, but for fiction overall, the only way of developing the story is to make the protagonist and if they're lucky, the side characters stronger, but never usually as strong as the protagonist. And they just keep going and going until what I'm going to call in this video the power threshold. Basically, this is just a divider I'm going to use to separate characters who are really powerful but well written in their respective environments, and characters who are way too powerful and just succumb to lazy dull writing. Now bad writing can consist of a lot of things. Inconsistent choices which don't match up to the pre-established goals of the characters, I mean you've got bad dialogue, their actions are just repetitive and the story kind of takes a standstill, you've got James Corden. There's a lot of people who would consider Superman a boring character, but Superman is kind of a weird case because yes he is kind of nigh invincible, he's this guy who can basically not be beaten by anything except a piece of rock. <laughs> He's got to have something, I guess. But there is a real beauty behind a character like Superman because it all lies in the duality of his character, balancing his life as Superman and Clark Kent. This comes with a lot of moral standings, and you can see this a lot in the magazines and the old stories. There are moments that are genuinely powerful just because of how powerful Superman is, and he has to deal with very grounded situations. And this is a common theme with a lot of anime characters, fiction characters in general. Goku goes through similar instances. Superman balances his life as Clark Kent, and his alternative life, where he wears tight outfits and flies around saving cats out of trees, and fighting the occasional bald man. Superman and powerful characters like this, they can pretty much do anything in their respective worlds, but the great part of their story is they choose not to. They choose to embrace morality. They choose to embrace ethics. And you've got the counter side, which is usually always displayed as the villain. But a lot of the time, I personally just think some of these characters, they need that extra level of thought. Now, this is just my opinion on the matter. If you like these, then that's totally, totally fine. But if we go back to anime, and I could dive into the massive pile of isekai, and here you'll find a plethora of characters that more or so tend to the power fantasies of the author, and thus the audience. That's another reason why powerful characters are so compelling to certain audiences because they can do anything, they can achieve anything in their world as opposed to real life where you can't really do anything at all. But to me, a lot of these types of characters do go above this power threshold because they tend to the fantasies of the creator, but the writing, it just isn't particularly there, at least not for me. My take on what makes a character way too powerful is when they're written with no other idea in mind of where to take them or how to ground them. But let's go over to One Piece. Now, I love One Piece, and One Piece is very lucky to have so many compelling characters. Because when it comes to old school literature or just the foundation of storytelling, having to ask your audience to read that many volumes or watch that many episodes should be a statement on bad writing, right? I don't really think so, because for the most part, I find One Piece is pretty consistent in just being innovative, despite its pretty basic story of A to B to C, let's go to these different islands. It does bulk up, and there are different characters that do get their fair share. And this is very much in the same way with Western series. I mean, I know a lot of long-running series that have stayed long-running because of their characters, because of their compellingness. Having said that, if you've actually watched the entirety of One Piece, uh, 
how do you do it? <laughs> I need to document you or something. Even if you watch One Piece, which is like the shortened version, like, I, I'm not, you know, forget that. How do you watch the entirety? Oh, man. Yeah, I need to make a documentary on you or something. If you've watched that, let me know in the comments because I... How do you find the time? <laughs> See, to me, a lot of people rag on these long-running series and characters being developed so much to the point that they're so powerful that it becomes bad writing. I don't think so. I don't believe in this. What matters to me is that the strength of a character should be judged within the parameters of its own story and world building. I'm not going to sit here and say that every single fictional character should have loads of deep-rooted flaws and loads of philosophical themes. You know, not everyone can be Batman. You so long as the writer provides the character with strong emotional or ethical development outside of the realm of their power level, it's a really good sign and what matters is allowing that character to develop consistently over your pre-planned runtime. And this can be handled in a million different ways. How you have your character develop, that's what the plot is and that's where intent comes in, that's where thematics come in. First thing I would ask myself if I really wanted to make a powerful character is firstly say why? Why do I want to make them strong? And what are the detriments of this? What is the reason behind this? And what can counter it? What can put them through the struggles which will form the story? The truth is you can have really well written powerful characters, we have so many of them, but if they have no personality or goal or reasoning or any moral standpoint, then maybe they need to be reconsidered a little bit. But even though they are still powerful, now there is actually a huge rise of characters who are more grounded, who are a little more complex than they previously were. I mean, look at Vinland Saga, for example. Look at Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer. A lot of these have really great, not only protagonists, but side characters too. A lot of the industry big boys have become really self-aware that you can have powerful characters and have them be interesting by incorporating external elements, philosophies, even taking the time to craft strong side characters is a real blessing in disguise. And over time I think writers and audiences too have just realised how kind of boring really really powerful characters are and have actually taken away their ability to solve things with ease. Again with western heroes, media is always in flux and we've matured as audiences and so darker themes are going to be implemented more because we don't want things to be sugarcoated. The best take I could really bring to this video is what DreamWorks are doing. DreamWorks is taking our preconceived ideas of animation, which for them is usually aimed at a younger demographic, although I'd always preach on this channel that animation is for anyone of any age. And DreamWorks, though they've always done this, are really pushing their characters to be so much more engaging by incorporating real things such as anxiety, such as emotional conflict. Guys, I really like Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I don't know what you want me to say. It's so good, honestly. <laughs> it's so good. But in a nutshell, finding the perfect balance between fantasy and reality is where great stories are made. It's the foundation of good storytelling, and it's where amazing characters are born, no matter how powerful they are. The main reason I wanted to make this video was just to say, don't be Ray.